Welcome to yet another session of the Taste Talks. Um, we are very excited to have Suruthi Swaminathan back with us again, and she is going to be demonstrating a sweet corn soup for us. I love that you you match your pot today. It's actually, oh, I do. Yeah. I do. I do. <laughs> one because my mom came to some of these and she was like your red one's too ratty <laughs> get rid of it and I was like she's like clean it or don't use it for the classes and I was like, <laughs> like you gotta you gotta get the like the tv pot so I, <laughs> yeah pot now. yeah so um I know that you are actually going to be making this for um a little celebration that you're going to this yes evening, some get together and everything yeah. So we're actually, she's actually going to be making a good sized batch of the sweet corn soup. So I'm excited to see this. So go ahead and take it away. Okay, cool. Hey guys. Um, hi, Christine's mom. <laughs> um, um, okay. So yes, as Christine said, so today is the Bali. So the Bali is the festival of lights in India. I was just telling Christine before we came on that Back when I lived in India as a kid, it was just the most fun time of year because everyone's like decked out, there's sweets and delicious food and crunchy things. And my mouth is watering just thinking about it, like actually. Uh, and then there's also a lot of fireworks. So not necessarily illegal fireworks like here or there. It's like kind of expected that you have fireworks. And in fact, I'm gonna show you something. Yeah, aren't, aren't fireworks like very much part of the whole festival and stuff? Yeah. Like it's yeah, yeah, because I was reading reading up on it. Yeah, it's very much part of it. And it's just a big celebration. It's like a new year, really. So, and I went to my eyebrow threading lady today and she was like, what's your wish for the new year? And I was like, I'm supposed to make a wish? Like, I, <laughs> now I've got to think of one for the party. Um, but anyway, what I'm showing you here is, I don't know where they got this from, but at my son's school, he's three and a half, he goes to Montessori. They sent him home with these sparklers. So you light them and then they like, well, they sparkle, uh, but then you can't do them like in the house or on balconies off buildings, obviously. So we're going to take them to the park this weekend, one evening, and then get together with some of our friends and do them. So that's what that is. Cool. But as Christine said, yes, I am going to my in-laws place for a the volley party tonight. There's going to be a ton of food. And I didn't put two and two together. I knew I was making the soup and then I knew I was going to that party, but then I was like, I didn't connect that I should make this for that party. So the amounts that you're going to see, not the first time that's happened. Um, the amounts you're going to see here are Careful. for 16 to 18 people. Yeah. Uh, so I'll send an, I'll send, when I send the recipe, I'll send one that's more reasonable, like for four to six people maybe. Perfect. And this is a soup you can keep in the fridge and kind of like, um, use or eat when it's in the fridge it'll keep for a few days hey Gemma it's been a while oh I just flipped windows and saw you so good to and, see you yes <laughs> yeah um yes so I'm gonna make the soup I'm gonna go ahead and get started what I will say is if you're gonna make the soup um get someone to help you chop stuff uh it, I usually when I cook I'll like chop and add and while the onions are cooking I'll go chop the next thing and I don't do that for these classes like I'll just keep everything in mise en place as they call it I think mm -hmm. um I'll like keep everything ready but there are a lot of little things to chop so what I would say is if you can get help get it if you don't mind chopping like putting on some music and dancing in your in your kitchen and chopping which is what I did you could do that too so this is the kind of soup I would say that you know like in the US, one thing you hear is, oh, if you're sick, you wanna eat like chicken noodle soup, like chicken noodle soup, like feeds the soul, makes you better. This is kind of my alternative to that because I don't really like chicken noodle soup. Um, I don't like the way the chicken's boiled in there. I don't like all the noodles. I, I just like something warm and hearty and something that isn't super, um, super intense in flavor. That doesn't mean it's flavorless. It doesn't mean it's bland. It just means that it, you're going to see that it's a little bit different than the typical recipes I made on here, which usually will have like six, seven, eight spices all blend together and like blooming and, um, and then adding like layers of fragrances to it. That is not what this is, but it is hearty. It's going to be nice and warm and you're going to love it. Um, anything else before I get started? I'm just going to get started and then I'll talk as I start. So okay. here's my pot. It does match my outfit today. Love it. 
Yeah, it's, it's also like way big. I almost never use this pot because I feel like it's too big. I think it's eight quarts maybe. And I'm rarely making stuff for this amount. But once I make this, I got to figure out like how to take it over there, even though they live down the street, like carrying this thing. So. <laughs> I can anyway. see you with like a wagon with the pot in it. Oh, I, I will stop at nothing. Like I will drive one block and then have someone help me take it up or because I'm not going to make this and then carry it over there and risk that it's going to fall. Yeah. Still. So, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm starting off. Well, actually, as the butter warms, I'm going to show you everything that goes in, but I'm going to get the butter started first. So what I have here is just some unsalted butter. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter and then I'm also gonna add a little bit of oil. So this is not a soup that's like super buttery or super rich in any way. Again, keep in mind it's for 16 to 18 people. So it's um, quite a bit going on here. Okay, so the butter is warming up in there. I'm gonna also add in a little bit of oil. So why don't I just move you this way? Can you guys see that? Yeah, not there. We go. a little bit lower, but much better. Yes. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you have a little bit of butter. What I'm also going to do is put in some oil, just so that the butter does not burn. I'm going to get a little ladle out. And while this warms up, I'll tell you what we're going to do. So as I mentioned, this is not some super intensely flavored like. Masala. Masala just basically just means like ground up spices. It's not a soup like that, but it does. It is a way where if you either don't like certain vegetables, but they're in your fridge, or if you have kids or other people in the house that don't like vegetables, this is a way to make something super healthy filled with veggies that's just packaged in a very warm and comforting um, way. So as an example, let's get this, going. this is warming up a little bit. Um, let me get this started first. So the first thing I'm going to put in there is some red chili. So these are actually Fresno chilies. I was going to get jalapenos, but I decided to get these red ones because they're about the same level of, of heat as a jalapeno in my opinion, but they they're like a little bit smokier, um, maybe a little bit fruitier. And I also like this color because you're going to see everything's going to be very yellow and green and orange. And I wanted to have kind of a pop of red in there. So this works for that too. I'm just going to saute this up. So this for me is already very different than how I start off recipes. Because if you've seen any of my other, um, any of my other classes, I always start with onion. Um, onion is one of my favorite things. And I almost, almost put in some purple onion in this just because I was like, why not? But then I decided I'd like to have a challenge of kind of making something and not have it be onion and still try to make it taste good. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really trying to get this to burn here. I'm just trying to get it to, I don't know, peppers bloom, but I'm certainly starting to get some of that flavor. And you can see the oils kind of turning a little more orangish color from the peppers. Now, if you don't want your soup to be too spicy or a little bit spicy, you can still add the peppers for the flavor of the peppers, but I would just de-seed them. And I learned this, do not de-seed them with your hands and your fingers, use a fork. Um, I didn't know that and my hands were on actual fire the last time I did that. And then people I was around were like, what were you thinking? Why would you do that? So. Now I've just added in the garlic. So every time I add in garlic, I'm always turning the heat down a little bit because the garlic will cook in the heat that's already there. And I'm not trying to get the garlic to burn. Next thing I'm adding is some ginger. Ginger is something, I love the flavor of ginger being in the background of things. I love to have that aromatic in there, but what I don't like is to bite into a piece of ginger. So for that reason, but I don't mind that with the garlic. So you'll see sometimes I'm grating the ginger and the garlic, and sometimes I'm mincing the garlic and uh, grating the ginger. I'll almost never just chop up ginger because if you get a bite of that stuff in your mouth while you're eating something else, it kind of ruins the next few bites for me. So okay, this is already smelling great. And 
I think about this a lot when I'm cooking where I like how this base smells or I'm thinking about how to start this. Like at this stage, in my opinion, like this could become anything. You could add some ground meat in here or impossible crumbles and toss that in with some onions and bok choy and then make a mix that you can put in lettuce cups. You could make this into a fried rice. You could make it into a lot of things. So once you kind of figure out the nice base that you like, which for me is usually ginger, garlic, onion, um, I'm happy to kind of like layer things on top of that or take it along different forks in the road based on it. Okay. So while that's happening, I'll zoom to me a little bit. Um, okay, so I mentioned that one of the things about this is if you don't like to eat a bunch of veggies or there are veggies you don't like, but they're in your fridge, um, this is the chance to use them. So I'm really quickly just gonna add some, the, I actually like green onions, so this is not what that pertains to. So what I have here is, it's gonna sound like a lot, remember the number of people. I have about 16 green onions that I've chopped up. And this is just the white and light green parts. So just the parts that are a little bit tougher to cook, mm -hmm. um, to cook down. So I'm gonna add this in here. I'll show you this once I add the next couple things. And this already smells really good. Um, and keep in mind, like I've added no spices to this so far. So you could still take it any way you want to take this Italian, you can take this Mexican, you can take it Middle Eastern, you can make it Indian. All right. Cooking, I'm just gonna show you a couple things that I'm going to add. The next couple things we're gonna add once this like warms up a little bit is some carrots and some green beans. So usually I don't like carrots or green beans. I just don't like gravitate towards them. I'm more like eggplant, mushroom, potato, A plus. Mm -hmm. um, those are the things I gravitate towards. But here I was like, it's a way to make it healthy. You get your vegetables in, but then I love corn, right? So I was like, I can put the ratio of it such where I have a little bit of um, carrot, a little bit of beans, and then the corn's the predominant flavor, but I'm still getting these vegetables. Can you, can you show the size of the pieces? Of, yes. Of both of those? So so the carrots are like that. The beans are like that. Oh, so you've and like then, sliced up the green beans. Exactly. Wow. And then the um, corn is about the, the same. So kernels. Yeah. yeah, the whole kernels. So, so this is another thing about green beans is it can be kind of tedious to like dice green beans like that. Um, I like making them whole as a side with just some like, again, garlic, olive oil or garlic, regular oil and then maybe drizzled with like some sesame and rice vinegar and then just having it as a side to some pretty heavy like meat dish. But I do chopping it like you can't add them whole in here and then you want everything to be about the same size. So I'll make it that way. Okay, I'm just consulting my notes really quick. Um, all right, so now we're ready to add the carrots and the beans. You can see this recipe is mainly just like adding things one by one to the pot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think it's like important to have all of this stuff. Oh, let me move this a little bit. Have all of this stuff just ready. Already you can see the colors. You can see the color, just like the white of the garlic, the red chilies, the orange carrots, and then the green beans. My son loves beans too, so we'll see. I mean, he he mostly likes when things are kept separate. Like when things are mixed together, he seems to think there's something wrong with them and he wants them separated. So I don't know if he'll have this soup, but maybe we'll see. Oh my gosh, that garlic and ginger is really coming through. Oh, I bet that smells amazing. It smells so, so good. And also, again, no other spices added to this. This is very strange for me. And I don't usually yeah. cook like this. <laughs> You're like, I'm um, resisting the urge to add everything. I am, spice. like, I just want to put in some garam masala really quick, which who knows, maybe I will at some point. But okay, I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. I'm just going to let this go for a couple of minutes before we add the next cup or the next couple of things. Thank you. 
Yeah, and hopefully this will be a nice mix. I don't know all the stuff we're eating for dinner tonight, but I don't know if this happens to you guys where you go somewhere and then you just get filled up on the appetizers because they're so good and so easy to snack on. Oh yeah, that definitely happens. Room. So I'm leaving off room for the other stuff. Okay. Yeah, that smells really good. Um, I'm just gonna let this go for like another minute or so. And then I'm gonna add in, add in the corn. So this is a recipe that I would say, um, here I'm talking about, you know, carrots and green beans. Like, could you, this is more of the classic way it's made. It's with carrots and green beans. But if you wanted, like, could you cut a potato really small and put in there? Yes. Um, but just keeping in mind that that will, um, one, probably require a little more seasoning just because potatoes are kind of absorbing stuff in. And if you put it in and it's just in the vegetables and the broth, it may taste a little bit bland. Um, either you might have to salt it more or you might have to kind of add something else to kind of infuse into the potatoes. Mushrooms. Um, I actually thought about putting mushrooms here, but that would be like a twist on this. But the way that I would do it here is because the rest of the soup you'll see is going to be pretty like it's going to have this kind of creamy, like silky consistency. I would almost like pan fry mushrooms separately, crisp them up, and then use them as a yeah, the garn. Yeah, as a garnish. Yeah, use them as a topping just to have um, have that texture, and then you can get the mushroom flavor without kind of completely cooking it down. So I was, as you're talking about these mushrooms, I was thinking of something else because that's going to give it like a nice umami and yeah. everything. And I was thinking that like um. Uh, a smoked bacon, like ground up smoked bacon, just to top it would be really nice. And at like kind of a yeah. nice contrast to that sweetness that corn brings in too. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think if you're, that would be really good. And I think, especially if you're using something like Fresno peppers, which are a little smoky anyway, I love that because then you can get the smoky element in a couple different ways yeah. and it doesn't overpower it. It just makes it kind of you're kind of like, what is that like extra thing that's in there? And you can't quite put your finger on it, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. I know I was trying to keep this one vegetarian here, but that's an interesting thing because if you go to a lot of Indian restaurants, they will serve this. So one of my favorite restaurants in Chicago is not some ultra fancy place. I think I've talked about it before. It's called JK Kebab and it's up on Devon and Rockwell. We've been going there for over 15 years. We just always get takeout from there, go there to eat. Their chili chicken is like so, so good. But when you go, they'll just bring out this corn soup for you. And I believe it's vegetarian usually, but there's places you can go that also have chicken in it. Mm -hmm. So I guess there really could be a form of like that chicken soup for the soul kind of thing with um, in a sweet corn soup capacity. Okay, so this is cooking pretty well. Again, we don't want this stuff to turn to mush. Um, I'm not gonna be pureeing this. I want to be able to kind of get the, wow, well, that'd be a shame if I pureed it after. <laughs> yeah, that after cutting <laughs> all those green beans up. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even if someone was like, this should be pureed, I'd be like, no, I'm gonna use my teeth. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna chew this the way I was meant to. Um, <laughs> all right, so here, Here's what it looks like now. It's just kind of cooked together. Garlic. So all we put in here is some butter, oil, garlic, ginger, red chilies, and then beans and carrot. With a little bit of salt. Next thing, we're gonna add all this corn in here. So, God, that's a lot of corn. Um, all this corn in here. So the kind of, oh, this is another thing I should say. I'll put this in the recipe too. The kind of corn you want to add here is, I did too when I was at the store, we're just going to get, you can use canned corn, you can use fresh corn, you can also use frozen corn. Mm -hmm. But the thing you want to make sure of is that it says sweet corn on there, which I think the difference between that and the other stuff, which was just in, um, also in a can, it just said canned corn, is that this, I think is just picked when it's more ripe. And so it's a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. So that sweet element is nice in here. And you'll see in a little bit where actually soon we're gonna add a tiny bit of sugar just to accentuate that even more. But 
Yeah, you definitely want to get the stuff that says sweet corn, but it can be frozen, fresh, or canned. And then when it's canned, I usually just drain the water that it comes in, and then I'll rinse it out once with water. That's mainly because I find that the saltiness can be kind of high in those, yeah. and I just want to avoid kind of the salt in that, and I want to be able to control the level of salt a little better. Okay. One of the secrets to making this restaurant quality or restaurant style is that you don't just want to add regular corn. You also want to add that. So you also want to add some pureed corn to it. Um, and that just looks like this. So add the cream. So get some cream corn and add that. In. Yeah, That's a great corn. tip. Yeah, and so here you can see the cream corn too. It has little full kernels in there. It's almost like it's been roughly pulsed or roughly kind of pureed. Um, and you yes, can do it this. is the secret sauce, Gemma. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna add one of these. I'm gonna add one more. Uh, another tip is if you don't like corn, don't make this soup. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would definitely say gonna, that. <laughs> Yeah, like I just want to preface this because I don't want people being like, well, you said it was really good. And then to dig and find out that they don't like corn. So uh, you kind of have to like corn. And then, oh, another thing I will say is I happen to get the creamed corn just to make it a little bit easier on myself. But I've made it in the past or what I'll do is like about, let's say I'm putting in like six cups of full corn or eight cups of full corn. I'll put about two cups two cups of the corn, I'll put it in a food processor with a little bit of water and just pulse it a little bit. So it's like homemade creamed corn, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, so that you get that same texture. So if you don't wanna get it in a can and you just have like frozen corn or whatever, you can do that at home. You just, the point is you just want some of it to be pureed. And this is similar to other soups I've made where sometimes if I'll make butternut squash soup, like a lot of it, I'll roast butternut squash, I'll put it in with all the aromatics, I'll puree it. But then I'll take a little bit, puree it and pour it back in so that it's almost like the essence of the butternut squash is in the broth. Um, and it's a way to make the whole thing creamier without adding cream and without adding you know, milk or anything like that. So you can see even once I added it, it has this really nice like smooth, silky, um, silky texture. The next thing I'm going to do is, this doesn't look like a soup yet. So far, this could be my elote. So if you want it, just put in a bit, bunch of seasonings and coconut milk and it would be my elote. So yeah. Like or I could see it even like going into an empanada or something like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, and I'm also at this point going to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. So I think for this amount, so it's going to look like a lot, but again, remember the amount. And this is not going to be an overall super, super sweet soup. It's like sweet corn with a little bit of sugar. And I'm going to salt it a little bit more too. Someday I'm going to start measuring my ingredients, but that day's not, <laughs> it's not today. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is um, to make it soupy, of course, you can add water to this, but I'm actually adding some vegetable broth. Or veg also, I don't know the difference between vegetable stock and vegetable broth. Sure. Is there, there is a difference. Oh. Um, there, yeah, I believe there is a difference. I cannot give you the exact okay. difference offhand, but I, there is, so. Okay. Yeah, because I saw both and I just picked this one up. So I was like, all right. All right. So I've added this vegetable stock that I'm using this time. I guess we'll see how it is. Adding a lot. Um, I don't know if I need this whole thing, but I need about six cups here. I'm just going to stir it. And I'm going to let this kind of come up to a boil. And then um, once it comes up to a boil, I'm just going to simmer it for a couple of minutes. And then we're just gonna add in our last couple things and we will be done. So at this stage, I am going to taste it just a little bit, knowing that there's a couple more things to add. Uh, 
Okay. It's good. It is spicy from all those red chilies I put in there, which I love. And again, no masalas in here. I know how many times I'm going to say it. I think it's mainly because I'm surprising myself. Like I don't cook like this usually. But like I said, if you're sick, um, and I guess if you can find someone to chop everything for you when you're sick, um, <laughs> this thing to do. But I think you can also buy cut green beans. Yeah, no? well, there's like the French, there's, the French green beans, definitely, but yeah. you probably want to chop those up maybe even a little bit more, or mm. maybe you want that kind of a texture within it too. Yeah. So it, it's just great. This is like, I call this, it's a very like inoffensive, unoffensive, inoff it's like very inoffensive. Anybody could have this and be like, this is pleasant. This is not too like strong on this or strong on that. Um, I used to know someone who like didn't like onions, which I didn't understand, but like this doesn't have onions, you know, it, mm -hmm. and it's definitely a, it's warm and hearty, but it's not, and it's filled with vegetables, but it's not filled with the usual vegetables I put in there, you know, so it's not with like, I love, 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 love potatoes. So it's not like ultra starchy and um, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not that kind of soup. No, it's so, nice because there's no, there's no dairy. Well, no, there's the butter. I apologize. There is dairy in it. So, there's the but butter. But, so slight. So yeah. But if you don't want butter, you can just use just oil. Use oil. Yeah. Now that I just try with anything that I cook to just be more flexible in what I make, because if I'm not flexible, then I know myself, like, I just won't want to make it. You know, if something seems like it's just too much work or it's going to require kind of specialty ingredients or specialty equipment. Um, I know myself, I'll just order takeout. And I'm like down the street from a Shake Shack. So there's like <laughs> the barrier to entry has to just be very slight. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's, it's, a, it's nice. Like, cause usually around this time of year, you know, we think of making like potato soup or butternut squash or all of these really great like root vegetables. But I've recently just been like raiding the pantry, you know, which I love doing anyway. But I think what happened is like work has just been super busy. And so I haven't had time to just go grocery shopping or plan out recipes and stuff. So I just open up the pantry and I'm like, what do I have? So yesterday, a couple of days ago, I found some fish and I found garlic, onions, and some butter. And I just pan fried the fish, put that in with some pesto and like called it dinner, you know, and it, it feels good. It feels good to clean out the pantry. Yeah. You know what I mean? like to be like, I use this and it's not going to go to waste now. So, um, yeah, I'm going to just wait for this to boil. You know what I'll do? I'll cover this up so that it boils a little quicker. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So do you guys have any plans for Friday evening? No, no, <laughs> you should probably make a soup or something actually. Yeah, oh. it's like a good idea. It is yeah. that time of year. Mm -hmm. This is a nice transition soup to uh, before you go into the real heavy, hearty uh, winter kind of soups. I can see you know that this would be <laughs> pleasant to, to have uh, without going into a food coma after you drink, you know, it's have a big bowl of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think like for something like this, I mean, we'll, we'll see how this is bringing to a potluck, but um, I think it's just some, like, I like bringing soups to potlucks because one, you dump everything in one pot and you just go, right? As much as I love like finger snackity snack foods that you just like nibble, they take a long time to make. Um, like I love making stuffed mushrooms, but maybe I'll I don't know if I've done that in one of the, maybe I'll make those in one of the future classes. I've made stuff. I don't think we did. Yeah. I don't think we did. Yeah. Cause there's just so many ways you could do it. You could do it with meat. You could do it without meat. You could use mm -hmm. the mushroom, not use the mushroom stems, which I always do because why would you throw that out? You could um, change up like the kind of cuisine it is. There's so much you can do, but it takes a while. Like, cause mm -hmm. after you make the filling, you got to fill each thing and then you got to top and you got to put it like, I know, and especially I always think about um, the time it takes to make it versus the time it takes to eat it, <laughs> you know? So you take a little yep. thing of mushroom, you could just pop like six of those a minute, yeah? 
It's like, so, are you having that good return on investment of your that's time? Exactly, right. I was going to say opportunity cost, but that wasn't the right term. It was return no, on it's investment. It's return on investment. <laughs> no, you got it. No, you got it. Yeah. It's like return on investment. Because like I'll make stuffed peppers sometimes. That's what I was thinking of. I've made stuffed peppers here. Mm-hmm. And I love making them, but sometimes just like chopping everything and sauteing everything, everything like takes some time. But here it's like, it is all contained in this pot. And then once it is done and cooled, I'm going to transfer them into little containers and like take them over, you know? So I know my husband was saying that we had everything to make stuffed peppers, like right, right at the end of October. And I looked at him and I go, oh, you can make, you can like cut jack-o'-lantern faces into them and make them cute Halloween ones. And Cassie would really <laughs> like that. And he looks at me and he goes, why would I spend my time doing that? Yeah. <laughs> you eat them so fast. He's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. I was actually thinking about, um, we did, we had family over and did some like pumpkin carving last weekend or the weekend before. And it was, I didn't do it because I don't, I don't like messes. I mean, I know it's a fun thing, but I don't want to like get my hands in there and then have the strings. So I helped with setting up some of it, helped with cleaning up, like, but then I, I didn't actually do it, but now we have a few pumpkins left over. So they're just sitting around as like decor in our place. So now I'm like, what should I make? Like, cause I'm not really a baker, but should I try some bump, pumpkin bread, maybe pumpkin soup is probably a thing, right? It is okay. a thing. Yeah. 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 So I got to think about like what pumpkin thing that you make. Cause I don't want to just have it as decor and like throw it out. You know? And there's a bland, that's a bland vegetable. <laughs> you can, you can have a lot of fun with spices. Uh, oh yeah. To, oh yeah. Cause it's it like no taste at all almost. So yeah, because they have pumpkin spice, you know, is all chemicals. <laughs> it's not yeah, right. natural. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's remarkable. Sometimes you think of the flavors you normally think of as associated with that fruit have nothing to do with that fruit. Yeah. You know, right? You think of like grape flavored candy or, um, yeah, it's not really super accurate. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look at this. It looks like it's starting to kind of foam up. This is another thing I would... This is something I had to, the first couple of times I made this, I had to look up like what to do about this. So you see how there's just some like foam, foamy stuff at the top. I mm-hmm. think that just comes from the corn. If you want, you can skim that off. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, but sometimes people will kind of skim that off. Um, so it's still there even as I like spin it. So it's just like stuff like that. Yeah. they'll take um i'm just gonna kind of leave it in this looks like it's almost done so this is the stage when it's almost coming to a boil when you should do this but i didn't do that and now this is happening so at this stage what you want to do is you want to take some corn starch this is like mm. corn on corn on corn here yeah um i read a book that was all about like the corn and everything we eat and it was like i think they talked about Nugget was about seven layers of corn, and they described all the different layers of corn that there were. But anyway, at this stage, so we've thickened it a little bit with the cream of corn or the pureed corn, whichever one you use. And at this stage, you do want to thicken it a little bit more to get it to be almost like not gelatinous, but it's this almost like silky kind of um, mm-hmm. a little more viscous texture, I guess, yeah. that it would be different if you put. Uh, cream in here versus you know corn. So this is the time at which you want to actually mix your cornstarch together because if you mix it in advance like I did, it's like stuck to the bottom. You see this? It's like little pieces. It comes up pretty quick, but you want to mix it now and just kind of stir it, get all of the little lumps out, and then you just add it into the soup, and then you let it kind of simmer a little more. And then it will thicken. And then as it cools, it'll thicken too. Because just like this, as you let it sit, it thickens. Um, with the cornstarch, as you let it sit in the soup, it will thicken as it cools. So, turn this up a little bit to see. All right, I'm just gonna pour this cornstarch in here. it's remarkable like some of this kitchen chemistry stuff is always fascinating to me to watch but like I'm not a chemist um 
And so I don't spend too much time thinking about like how these particles kind of fuse together. Like I don't think about that, but it is really fun for me to see it happen. So I just put it in and I'm thinking like, this did nothing, but I know I'm gonna wait about five minutes and this is gonna get nice, um, nice and thickened. So, so how much corn starch to water should you do? Yeah, so it is about, here, I kind of took some notes on that. I believe it's like for one teaspoon of corn starch. Let's see. I think it's about four tablespoons of water for about one teaspoon of corn starch. Okay, and we will have this recipe also um, at the beginning of next week. I will be sending it out yeah, um, so that everyone can have it. And Saruthi will have it in uh, a more appropriate portion. I will. <laughs> I will. It'll be, I'm going to do it for like four to six people. Because this Perfect. is a nice thing to make when you have people over for dinner. Um, okay, it's already thickening up. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's already thickening up. It doesn't just look, it's gonna happen even more, but it doesn't look like just with the broth in there from before. Mm -hmm. It's thickening up, it's getting nice and over. And then the final, final thing we wanna add, and I'm actually gonna add half of this now and then add half of it when I'm garnishing. So this is the green parts of the scallion. So I'm just gonna add half of this. I just chopped them up like really, really small like that. Sometimes what I'll do is I will put some of the green parts of the scallions, even when I'm cooking, like just build it in. Um, but sometimes I won't just because you have to be a little more careful with those, like they cook much faster. Stir this in, and then I'm just gonna have this kind of simmer for a little bit. And when that's all done, I'm just gonna plate it out. All right, last thing to do, actually, is to check for seasoning. So check for salt, make sure that it's at the level that you like it. And then another thing I'm gonna try here is a little squeeze of lemon. So in the past I've put in just like, or maybe a teaspoon of vinegar for about, let's say about four quarts of the soup. It sounds like very little, but it just really- Brightens um, it up. Makes it bright and, uh, bright and like punchy almost. You don't need too much. And then uh, here, you know, I'm not using white vinegar. I have some lemon that I've cut up that I need to use. I'll probably just finish with like a squeeze of lemon. Okay, I'm gonna plate some of this out. Try it, might have to let it simmer a little more, but just so you can see. Oh, it has like- I saw that. <laughs> Do you see that? Yes. <laughs> That's either like the, it's oh, like, I think that, the, it's like this, like a slice of cob almost in there somewhere. Yeah. I think it's like a piece that didn't quite get pureed from the cream of corn. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think it, that's what I was just trying to, oh, there, you see that? Yeah. I think it's a piece from the creamed corn that maybe when it was kind of pulsed unevenly. Okay. Turn the heat down. I'm going to pour. That you can see that's like a little bit milky looking mm -hmm. from the cornstarch and then also from the creamed corn. Okay, and then let me top this with a bit of green onion. And I'm gonna finish it with squeeze of lemon. So a tiny squeeze in here. So for adding lemon or any kind of acid to the pot, I always do that once I've turned it off because um, the acid can just get a little bitter if you're cooking it or if it's on heat. So I usually won't add um, acid. If, like right now I'm thinking I'm maybe gonna let this simmer for three, four more minutes. And then at the very end, once I turn it off is when I'll add in the lemon to the whole to the whole pot. Okay, so it looks like that. You can see it has like a light kind of uh -huh. cloudy consistency. And I'll try it. Let's try it. It looks good. It looks, it looks very good, yes. Nice. So good. 
definitely de-seed the chilies if you don't want to be spicy. <laughs> it's very good. I love it. Um, but I'm gonna have to like, I don't know, I'm gonna have to tone down the spice a little bit to give it to Zane, to give it to my son, or he'll say like his tongue hurts is what he says when things are spicy. So I find a way. So this is another thing I always think about is like if you make something and there's something in there you can't fix. I never think of anything as you can't fix, basically, because if I did that, like, I wouldn't be able to eat anything. I'm constantly just doing something and being like, uh, that doesn't taste how I thought it would. So now a thing I'm thinking about is, okay, this is pretty spicy. If I want him to eat it, like, how am I going to tone down the spice in this a little bit? So this is probably a case where I'd add in a little bit of milk. So milk will, like, tone down the spice a little bit. Um, and it sounds weird, but even into a quantity like this, if you even add in like a teaspoon of sour cream. Oh yeah. And, and not when it's too hot though, because otherwise it can curdle. Like if you add sour cream or yogurt or even milk at this point. Oh, yeah, like, uh, plain yogurt. I would I would yeah. put in plain yogurt. Usually when something's too spicy, that'll that'll be what I'll grab is some plain yogurt. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So if you just put that in and stir it in, it should be fine. And like you said, Gemma, like with plain yogurt, you're not really affecting the taste that much you know yeah. you're just making it a little less spicy but you're not really taking away any of the flavor or changing any of the flavors so it should be um, it should be just fine for that yeah. so that's all I have mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait awesome. just to scrap a little more that's probably fine I need to try some of the little pieces to see if they're cooked through but because they're cut so small so that's another reason to cut them pretty small is you want them to cook pretty quickly and you want them all to cook at the same time mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm gonna just check that that's pretty cooked through, but I'm even thinking with how hot the liquid is, it'll even continue to cook a little bit in there with the size that it is. And I'm gonna let this pot finish cooking for the next like three, four minutes, and then turn off the heat, finish it with some lemon juice, and then let it cool before I transfer to some other containers. Yeah, well, awesome. This actually, it, it's something that if you do wanna make a big batch of it too, looks yeah. like something that you could easily freeze. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, which is always good for the upcoming winter. Um, yes. Well, thank you so much for the, Gemma, do you have any questions about this recipe or anything at all? I don't think so. I think you had some good ones though. So that was, that was good. Thank you for chiming and, in. And actually I'm thinking since I live alone in that, if I make this and then freeze it, you could always um, defrost one and add a, a chopped up leftover chicken or something like that. Oh, I would think, you know, sometimes you have leftovers in there and, and that, and I think this, that would go really well to chop up some cooked uh, chicken and just add it when you're heating it up and that. So that I'm already thinking of different ways instead of having 10 packages of the same stuff. I can do innovate. Thank you that you gave, you know, it's easy to innovate it with different things. So yeah, yeah. I try to provide something that's like more of a base of what you can make. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right? And then even here, I kept mentioning I did not spice it, I did not spice it. So you're saying, you know, you know, you wouldn't want to eat the same thing over and over. Yeah. When you reheat it, you can add some seasonings to it, right? Like yeah. something like yeah. this is gonna be good at taking on flavors. So I would even say if you want to add like a little drizzle of truffle oil for one of them. It yep. could be then add some crispy mushrooms on top. Those yep. kind of complement each other. Another time, if you want to add in, um, it sounds pretty, but one of my like biggest hacks is to add some salsa, either fresh salsa or canned salsa. If I have yep. some left over and I'm like, I don't want to eat chips anymore. I got to get rid of the salsa. Right. I'll right. dump that into something. And then you can just break up some tortilla chips on the top. And it would be more of like a vegetable corn tortilla soup. Yeah. Um, or so if you had ordered, if you had gotten Chinese takeout and you have rice left over, you can yeah. heat it up with the rice, which will actually thicken it up a little bit and make it more like a porridge kind of. So yeah. Yeah. there's ways to do it, but I mean, I'm just so relieved that I didn't have to add anything and it's, <laughs> it's, it's edible and it's, it's good. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> I really like my bar just used to be like, is this edible? And now it's like, it has to be edible and it has it to be good. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. Well, thank you so right. much. See you guys. It was a great way to finish out this week and we will be seeing yeah. more of you at upcoming taste talks. Thank you everyone. And have a great yeah. night and a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. See Bye. you guys. Bye.